Hey, I wanted to give you a quick walkthrough of my new software. It's called Gamepad IO. Uh, and what this does is it lets you use any game controller as a satellite service with Companion. So for my demo here, I've got a wired Xbox 360 controller uh, and it's hooked up via USB to my Mac. Uh, but you can use any controller. You can use Bluetooth, uh, anything that your computer will detect as a game controller. So here's the software. I've connected my controller and it shows me all of the buttons of the controller so if i you know if i press a button here you can see the screen a button it shows up as button zero on the mapping uh, if i've got a trigger i can slowly depress that trigger and you can see the percentage i've got it pressed down uh, it supports axis you can see if an axis is going left or right or up or down um, and then all of the other buttons are registered um, and so what this does is it communicates with a companion module over socket IO and then the companion module itself emulates a companion surface. So if we go look at the module, you can see here, uh, I've told it to connect to my gamepad IO host. And since I'm running companion on the same computer that I've got gamepad IO on, I'm using of course my local host IP. For you, that might be different if your controller is connected to a different computer on your network. Um, and then I choose uh, my controller that it detected. Um, the button mapping here is just, it makes it easier if you've got uh, variables that you wanna see, it will show them to you in the way that the controller is laid out. So instead of calling it button zero, it will call it button A. Um, but you can use generic mapping or you can use any of the ones that I've pre-made here. And of course, if there's one that's not listed, you can always submit a pull request to the repository to get that added. If I happen to be running a companion, but I want it to be a satellite surface to another companion, it's a bit of an odd setup, but you can specify that here in the module. You would choose the, again, the host and the port for that. Uh, but because I'm running the module on the same uh, companion instance that I want the surface to be on, again, I'm going to leave that as local host. Um, you can choose if you want to enable haptic feedback, which is what will make the controller vibrate when you press buttons. Um, you can set the button press threshold. So let's say uh, <clears throat> if I have a button and I want it to really uh, press the companion button at some percentage close to 100% pressed, um, I could set that to be like 90%. So maybe, maybe I have a button on my controller that's broken that never reaches 100% for some reason. You can play with these settings here to kind of get a custom setup. Um, again, same thing with button release. Maybe my button doesn't reach 0%, maybe it's 1%. Um, you can set that to, to react that way. Uh, button debounce, if you want to control uh, how quickly you can press a button and it'll register it again over and over and over, uh, you can set that there, but 50 milliseconds is a pretty good value. Um, these button ranges, so by default, when you press a button, uh, the actual pressed value is some floating point number between zero and one, zero being not pressed, one being fully pressed. Uh, but if you want to change that to say, I want it to show negative 1200 when it's not pressed to 1200 when it is pressed, uh, you could set that here and it's just basically a custom display range. Um, similar settings for axis movement. So if you would like an axis movement to react like a button press, so let's say for example, when I go all the way to one side, I want that to be a button press. And then when I go all the way to this side, I want that to be a button press. Um, that would be a way to do that. You can set uh, axis movement as button press. Um, again, with axis movements, you can also set your uh, dead zones. So uh, some some controllers, whether they're broken or just the way they function, so you can so you can set your your dead zone values so that basically it will ignore um, that percentage of variance that should not be registered as uh, as access movement. So if I go into variables for this module, you can see um, every basically every button and access is represented here. So let me just filter it by buttons. Uh, so if I have um, button A and I press it, you can see it changed to true and it's gonna show me the percentage. Uh, of course, some uh, buttons, depending on your controller or your access, you know, it may be a negative value. So you can see the, the percentage and the absolute value if you need that. 
These are mostly just useful for um, triggers if you want to do something when, when it reaches a certain value. And so uh, you can really see basically what every um, button or axis is doing. So I'm going to filter it here to an axis and let's look at the left stick X. And again, it knows that left stick X, um, what, it, what it direction it is and what axis it is based on the mapping that I chose for my controller. Um, so it says right now that it's in the center. So if I start to move it left, you'd see it knows it's going left. If I let go, it'll go back to the center. Um, I can move it to the right. And um, again, that's just a way to see everything that that, that axis is doing. Uh, you can see the raw value there. It's, if I have it all the way left, it's negative one. If I go just off of all the way left, you know, it starts getting into these um, you know, floating point values. Again, that's between, for an axis, it's somewhere between negative one and one versus a button would be somewhere between zero and one because an axis can go all the way to its negative range. Um, so again, those are mostly for uh, if you want to do triggers based on some value. So you can see here, if I press these buttons, they show up as presses on the controller. So if I, uh, let's say I want to do a trigger, I can press my right trigger down and I've got it, you know, just barely pressed and it's showing that it's about, you know, 19% pressed or I can go all the way down and it shows that it's fully pressed. Um, and that's just a, a different way to register um, you know, the, those values, any button on the controller can be assigned to the surface. And the way that works is based on the mapping. So I'll show you here. If you open the help file, you can see like for the Xbox 360 controller, the trigger itself is, is, is going to be button seven. So if I go over to my buttons and I were to put something here, when I press that trigger all the way down, it's pressing button seven. Um, and that's kind of based on your mapping. If you were had a super wide surface, you know, button eight might be over here, but since I don't, button eight is going to be over here. And so, um, let's see, button eight is, button eight is the little uh, back button on the controller. And so this is button eight. Um, so that's basically how that mapping works. And so you may have to play around with that depending on what controller you have. Just remember that it's zero based. Uh, so it starts at zero and it goes up from there. You can tell in gamepad, um, if you were to open up its interface, uh, you can see, you know, anytime you press a button, it's going to tell you it's that button number. And so that should help you map it to companion if you're using a controller that's not uh, already uh, supported with a default mapping in the module. A couple other things on the gamepad IO interface. Uh, if you open the context menu, you'll see the controllers that are detected. And so uh, my particular controller shows up as a standard gamepad um, and I can hide the controls. I can show the controls on startup. So that's a walkthrough of Gamepad IO, and I hope it helps you guys. Uh, you know, I'm using the, the superior wired 360 controller here. Uh, that's just what I like. It's what I had available, but uh, I've used this with great results using wireless PlayStation controllers, uh, the 360, the Xbox One controller, um, and it pretty much supports anything your computer will detect as a game controller. So check it out. You can get the software uh, from my GitHub repository. I'll include the link below. Uh, and you can also uh, get the module in Companion. So have fun.